Hi, this is Dr. Henderson. Feel free to call me Sean, Dr. Henderson, whatever you'd like. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the vasectomy. Very common procedure, not a lot of complications from it. We usually do this in the office. Occasionally, we might need to do it in the operating room if there's some sort of difference in anatomy or if the patient just has too much anxiety. All those things um, are warranted. So it's a very easy procedure. There are some progressive steps that we've taken over the years, and now we do a no-scalpel vasectomy where we just poke a little teeny hole into the skin and spread the skin open. And through that little teeny hole, we can grab each one of the vas deferens or those tubes that transport the sperm from the testicle um, into the ejaculate. We have to do one side first and then the other side, you do have two sides. What research has shown us to be most effective is cutting out at least a two centimeter a segment of that tissue, clipping both ends or suturing both ends, and then cauterizing both ends, and that gives us the best chance of this procedure working. Things that everybody always talks to me about, you know, what's different about the way that you're doing vasectomies now compared to how they used to do them. I was very spoiled, but we kind of cheat as physicians if we need procedures ourselves because we get to see behind the scenes. So during my residency, I got to see 20, 30 different urologists, how they did vasectomies, and you could hand pick the urologist who did the best. Best. and he did a very up-to-date modern no scalpel vasectomy uh, we have added to that since then and now use a sometimes a children's device called a metajet device where it injects the lidocaine instead of using a needle so it definitely takes the edge off of the pain from the needle it's more of a flick or like somebody put, pulling out a, a hair and that's what it feels like. They use this on children to numb up the area before they put a needle in or do an IV. And what we found is majority of the time, all we have to do, use is the air compressed lidocaine device and we don't even have to use a needle. So it's really cool. It ends up being a no scalpel and no needle vasectomy. Other things that have really come a long way as far as technology goes to improve the procedure are using a uh, portable cautery, electrical cautery system. We used to use a portable heat cautery system and the electrical cautery did so much better. We were using that in the operating room, but now because of technology, these boxes are a lot smaller and we can have them right in our office. All these have made it better. What to expect at the time of your vasectomy? It takes about 20 minutes in the office or in the operating room. We do numb you up and make sure you're comfortable before we get going and start the procedure, so we will test that. Once the procedure's done, you want to do a lot of ice, a lot of compression. Some guys will bring compression shorts to the procedure so they can wear them afterwards. And we even give you a lot of ice to start right away, icing things, compressing it. That will decrease the risk of bleeding and the risk of inflammation or swelling and decrease your pain overall. Other things to look for afterwards, everybody says, what are the complications of a vasectomy? First is bleeding. We just don't see a lot of this now that we have the electrical cautery that we use, but there's still a risk that you can get bruising on the right side, the left side, the whole scrotum, or the whole scrotum could even fill up with blood. If any of that happens, we just tell you to keep continuing ice and compression. It's not worth going back in there and mucking things up even more and stirring up more bleeding because it's just gonna make things worse. We try to prevent that during the procedure with this better type of cautery so you don't have to worry about it. Using that MetaJet device or the air compressed lidocaine device, most of my patients get bruising around the pulp hole site. So that's something to just anticipate. The second risk of a vasectomy is an infection. I'm not even sure if you've even had one. I couldn't tell you when I've last seen an infection with a vasectomy. We do everything sterile technique. And the risk of infection has actually gone down when we switched from an open uh, scalpel vasectomy where they make incisions on the side to a no scalpel poke hole site in the middle. So you can imagine less incisions, less open tissue, less infection. Third thing is pain. Everybody always asks me about pain. How terrible is it gonna be? Keep in mind, we all have the man cold, and so we may exaggerate things a little bit. But with my patients in particular, the surgeon who did my vasectomy did a very aggressive nerve stripping technique where he tried to make sure the only thing that he was cutting or clipping or cauterizing was just the tube itself and not all the tissue on the outside, which houses a lot of the nerves and the vasculature. And when he did that, 50% of his patients 
didn't have pain at all after the procedure. The other 50% of the patients had kind of a dull ache, which is kind of standard for a lot of vasectomies. I have the same results, I do the same technique. Well, during my procedure, I did have that pain afterwards, and it was kind of a dull ache, it was nothing sharp. I didn't use narcotics for it, I just did Tylenol and ibuprofen. Ice actually helped the most, and after the first two or three days, I really didn't have any pain afterwards. I have my patients kind of take it easy that first week, no intercourse, no heavy exercise or lifting, and that way you kind of allow things to heal so that when you do start doing that a one week later you don't have a lot of pain or you don't spike up a lot of pain or start things that wouldn't have started had you not been that active other than that the fourth and most important thing is there's always a chance those tubes can grow back together and so we want you to always use contraceptives until you do the two month or three month semen sample where we check for sperm as long as there's not any sperm, then you should be fine not using contraceptives. Occasionally we'll see some dead sperm, maybe three or four dead sperm on the semen sample. That's not going to get you pregnant. That's actually less sperm than somebody who's considered infertile has. And the biggest thing with that is there's still a lot of tube that goes up and in your body that you have millions of sperm in, you have to clean out those sperm. So guys always like this, but I tell them, go have more intercourse and then come back and give me another sample. Other than that, uh, there are rare instances where the tubes maybe grew back a year later or two years later. That does not happen that often. So I don't want you to be worried about that. This is 99% effective as long as that semen sample comes back negative. I look forward to taking care of you and doing the surgery. If you have more questions, we'll answer them before we perform the procedure. Thank you.